uh, there just seems to be unprecedented press coverage of Taiwan's elections this time. And why do you think that's the case? Some of that interest has just been focused on Taiwan's democracy, uh, its key role in semiconductor supply chains. Uh, and a great deal of attention, of course, has also been uh, focused on the growing cross-strait tensions and the risk of military conflict. Um, do you think those worries are um, legitimate? We know that the head of the Central Intelligence Agency in the United States, Bill Burns, has said that uh, Xi Jinping instructed the PLA to have the capabilities to seize and control Taiwan by 2027. So I think the concern is warranted. That said, I don't think that there is evidence that a an attack on Taiwan is either imminent uh, or inevitable. But what, in your view, is the missing story of Taiwan? I'd like to point out that there is much more coverage in the international media. This is not only due to increased interest, but also due to the fact that many really top-notch reporters who left China are now based in Taiwan. And there's been many in-depth stories about Taiwan uh, in recent years. Uh, for example, its indigenous communities. I think perhaps one issue uh, from my perspective that hasn't received sufficient attention is the relationship um, between the civilians and the military. I think what you have in Taiwan is still fairly stovepiped um, developments where the military is making its own advances in terms of its capabilities to defend Taiwan. And then you have these separate NGO-run mm -hmm. things like Forward Defense and the Kuma Academy that are trying to do very good work with average people. But um, it's my understanding that these two are not really integrated. As a longtime observer of Taiwan, um, it, you, and you have mentioned there's a surge of interest uh, in Taiwan internationally, as well as in Washington, D.C. And how do you feel about the quality of the analysis? China's gray zone threats. Um, are quite pernicious um, and dangerous for Taiwan. And this includes cyber disinformation, propaganda. Mm -hmm. I hope that the conversation about Taiwan's security uh, is, is defined as more than just uh, helping to defend Taiwan, which again, essential, but we think more about Taiwan's security in a broader way and help Taiwan to counter other threats, especially um, the uh, psychological uh, um, and cognitive warfare that the PRC is using against Taiwan. It really wants to convince the people of Taiwan that uh, they shouldn't have confidence in their government uh, or in the United States, and that they really don't have a bright future unless they uh, become part of, of China. And I think it requires the United States to think more about how we can reassure the people of Taiwan and how we can uh, make the people of Taiwan more aware of uh, the United States commitments to Taiwan security. It's also an election year in Washington, D.C., and uh, we're likely to see stronger rhetoric about China on the campaign trail. Uh, we know a congressional delegation is also on its way to Taipei, led by Representative Mike Gallagher. Um, so how will D.C. play a role in this delicate trilateral relations? Washington will work to preserve the cross-strait status quo. It will encourage Beijing to be open to dialogue with the democratically elected government in Taipei, and it will suggest that Beijing judge President-elect Lai by his future words and deeds as president, not by his past. Washington will continue to strengthen relations with Taiwan, and that means not only in the defense area, but also strengthening our bilateral economic relationship. Uh, which uh, at least I hope to see this year, the finalization of the double tax agreement, mm -hmm. as well as the 21st century uh, U.S.-Taiwan trade initiative.